record on this computer. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to Baptist Ecclesia. The Baptist. From Yahukanon, the Baptist. All right, magandang umaga po sa ating lahat and good morning. I hope and pray that you all had a good week and had a restful sleep tonight. No, uh, tayo po ay, we are all ready once again to study the Word. We got a lot of reading to do, so I hope you're all ready. And uh, let's uh, give the floor to Brother Gary. Opening prayer na rin, sir. All right. Good morning, good morning, good morning, brethren. Uh, please turn your scriptures in the book of Psalms 119, yung ating favorite na chapter. Psalms 119, we will sing from Ket to Tet 57 to 72. 57 to 72. Psalms 119 from verse 57 to 72. All right, mga bagong joy, magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. I hope and pray that you have a very good rest. All right, Psalms 119, 57 to 72. Thou art my portion, Yahuwah. I have said that I would keep thy word. I keep that I favor with my whole heart. Be merciful unto me according to thy word. I thought on my ways and turned my feet and to thy testimonies. I made peace and delayed not to keep thy commandments. The bands of the wicked have robbed me. I have not forgotten thy love. At midnight I will rise to give thanks unto thee because of thy righteous judgment. I am my companion of all them that fear thee and of them that keep thy peace. The earth, Yahuwah, is full of thy mercy. It's me thy statue. 65. Thou hast built well with thy servant, O Lord, according to thy word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I have believed thy commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now have I kept thy word. Thou art good and do is good. Teach me thy statue. The proud have words a lie against me, but I hold the good precepts with my whole heart. The heart is as fat as a grease, but I delight in thy love. 71. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. The Lord thy mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. One more time, 72. The Lord thy mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and 
and silver. Amen. So magandang umaga po ulit sa mga bagong join. Let's go to Yahuwah in prayer. Father Yahuwah in heaven, I will be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The Elohim of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaqub, we praise and thank you, Father, sa araw na ito na binigay niyo po sa amin, sa maayos na kapahingahan na pinagkalob niyo po sa amin. Thank you, Father, sa pag-restore ng aming mga kalakasan sa panibagong buhay na pinagkalob niyo po sa amin. Salamat po sa lahat ng ito. Salamat, Panginoon, sa araw na ito na muli mag-aaral po kami ng inyong scriptures, ng inyong salita. I pray, Father, na pangunahan niyo po ang inyong gawain. Kayo po magbigay ng kaunawaan para sa bawat isa. And I pray, Father, na na mga, mga, mga matutunan po namin sa araw na ito, eh, ma-apply po namin sa aming buhay, Panginoon, and mapapawihan namin kayo. May mga kapatid kami, Panginoon, na hindi pa po namin nakakasama online. I pray, Father, dalhin niyo po sila sa inyong gawain. May mga kapatid kami na papasok sa trabaho at mga nasa trabaho ngayon, Panginoon. I pray, Father, ang pag-iingat para sa kanila. Gayun na rin po yung mga pamilya po namin na hindi po namin kasama. Mga pamilya po namin na sa Pilipinas, sa ibang lugar, sa, sa UAE, at hindi dito sa Saudi Arabia. And sa ibang panig ng mundo, Panginoon, I pray, Father, yung pag-iingat sa kanila. Ilayo niyo po kami sa anumang mga pumakalat na pandemic, Panginoon, sa mga pumakalat na virus. And I pray, Father, yung protection niyo po para sa bawat isa. Salamat, Panginoon, sa lahat ng provision na pinagkakalob niyo sa amin sa araw-araw sa pagpuprovide po ng aming mga pangangailangan. Salamat, Panginoon, sa mga trials na binibigay niyo po sa amin, lalo pong tumatatag at lalo pong uh, tumitibay yung aming pananampalataya sa inyo. Salamat, Panginoon, sa pagtuturok nito sa amin, Panginoon. And salamat, Panginoon, sa eklesaya na meron kami na patuloy niyo pong ginagamit para mas lalo namin maunawaan ang inyong salita. Salamat sa, sa, sa man of God na ginagamit niyo, Panginoon. Salamat sa mga kapatid ko, Panginoon, na binibigay niyo po ng desire na nagpapatuloy po na mas makilalanin kayo, mas, maki, mas maunawaan kayo, mas makilala ang inyong karakter, Panginoon, nang sa gayon, Panginoon, mapapurihan namin kayo, masunod po namin ang inyong mga utos. Salamat po sa lahat ng ito. Kung may mga pagkukulang kami, Panginoon, I pray, Father, patawarin niyo po kami. May mga bagay po po kami hindi nagagawa sa inyo. I pray, Father, I pray, unawa niyo po ito sa amin, nang sa gayon po, masunod po namin ang inyong nais sa buhay namin, Panginoon. Salamat po and we praise and thank you. We magnify you, Panginoon. Kayo lang po ang maitaas sa buong, sa, sa buong buhay namin, sa buong pag-aaral namin ngayong araw na to. Ang inyong pangalan ang maitaas at hindi po yung aming mga sarili. Ito po ang aking dalangin sa pangalan ng inyong anak, ni si Yahusha. Amen. Right. One more song. All right. <laughs> <Naka -off kapalasan. laughs> One more song. Let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 40. Verse, last verse. Isaiah chapter 40. Verse 31. Isaiah 40. Hintayin po natin sa ating mga screen. Isaiah 40, verse 31. All right. One verse, but beautiful, beautiful verse. All right, Isaiah 40, 31. But they that wait upon Yahuwah shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as he yells. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Teach me a hua, teach me a hua to wait. One more time. But they that wait upon Yahuwah shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with me as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Teach me a hua, teach me a hua to wait. Sa pa po, sa pa. But they that wait to find Yahuwah shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Teach me Yahuwah, teach me Yahuwah to wait. Amen. Let's proceed to our scripture reading, Brother Gary. All right, please turn your scriptures in the book of Genesis. Itutuloy po natin ang ating uh, scripture reading 
chapter 18, and we will read from verse 1 to 15 in this chapter. Then we will jump on chapter 19 and no, chapter 20 and 21 until 21. All right, from 18, 1 to 15, then we will go on 20 to 21. Nang book of Genesis. All right. Nandiyan na po kayong lahat. Chapter 18, 1 to 15. All right. Genesis chapter 18, verse 1. The scripture says, And Yehuwa appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he leaped up his eyes, and looked, and lo, Three men stood by him, and when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground and said, My Elohim, if now I have my Adonai, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched and wash your feet and dress yourselves under the tree. And I will fetch a morsel of bread and comfort ye your hearts. After that ye shall pass on, for therefore are ye come to your servant. And they said, So do as thou hast said. And Abraham hastened into the Alright, sorry for that. Chapter 18, verse 6. Genesis chapter 18, verse 6. And Abraham hastened into the tent unto Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes upon the heart. And Abraham ran unto the herd and fetched a cup tender and good and gave it unto a young man, and he hastened to, dr to dress it. And he took butter and milk and the cup which he had dressed and set it before them, and he stood by them under the tree, and they did eat. And they said unto him, where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee, unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and were stricken in the age. And it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, after I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also? Verse 13, And Yahuwah said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child which am old? Is, is anything too hard for Yahuwah? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee, according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Then Sarah denied, saying, I laughed not, for she was afraid. And he said, Nay, but, th but thou didst laugh. All right, let's go to so chapter 20. Genesis chapter 20. Verse 1. And Abraham journeyed from thence toward the south country, and dwelt between Cadiz and Shur, and sojourned in Gerar. And Abraham said of Sarah's wife, She is my sister. And Abimelech, king of Gerar, sent and took Sarah. But Elohim came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man, for the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. But Abimelech had not come near, near her, and he said, Adonai, will thou also slay, will thou slay also a righteous nation? Said he not unto me, she is my sister. And she even she herself said, he is my brother, in the integrity of my heart and innocency of my hands, have I done this. Verse 6. And Elohim said unto him in a dream, Yeah, I know that thou didst this in the integrity of thy heart, for I also withheld thee from sinning against me. Therefore suffered I thee not to touch her. Now therefore restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet. And he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. And if thou restore her not, Know thou that thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are thine. Therefore Abimelech rose in the morning and called his servants and told all these things in, the, in their ears, and the men were sore afraid. Then Abimelech called Abraham and said unto him, 
What hast thou done unto us? And what have I offended thee, that thou hast brought on me and on my kingdom a great sin? Thou hast done deeds unto me that ought not to be done. And Abimelech said unto Abraham, What so is that that thou hast done this thing? And Abraham said, Because I thought, surely the fear of the fear of Elohim is not in this place, and they will slay me for my wife's sake. Verse 12. And yet indeed she is my sister. She is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother. And she became my wife. And it came to pass when God when when Elohim caused me to wander from my father's house, that I said unto her, This is thy kindness, which thou shalt shew unto me at every place whether we shall come, say of me, he is my brother. And Abimelech took sheep and oxen and men servants and women servants, and gave them unto Abraham, and restored him Sarah his wife. And Abimelech said, Behold, my land is before thee, dwell where it pleaseth thee. And unto Sarah he said, Behold, I have given thy brother a thousand pieces of silver. Behold, he is to thee a covering of the eyes, and so all that are with thee, and with all other that she was reproved. So Abraham prayed unto Elohim, and Elohim healed Abimelech and his wife and his maid servants, and they were children. For Yahuwah had first closed up all the wounds of the house of Abimelech because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. Let's continue chapter 31, verse 1. And Yahuwah visited Sarah as he had said, and Yahuwah did unto Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which, Yahu, of which Elohim had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Zara bare to him, Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac, being eight days old, as Elohim had commanded him. And Abraham was an hundred years old when he, his son Isaac was born unto him. And Sarah said, Elohim hath made me to laugh, so that all that hear will laugh with me. And she said, Who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah should have given children suck? For I have borne him a son in his old age. And the child grew and was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which she had borne unto Abraham, mocking. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this band woman and her son. For the son of this band woman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight. Because of his son. And Elohim said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad, and because of, the, of thy band woman, in all that Sarah had said unto thee, hearken unto her voice, for in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Verse 13. And also of the son of band woman will I make a nation, because he is thy seed. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and took bread and a bottle of water, and gave it unto Hagar, putting it on her shoulder, and the child, and sent her away. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. And the water was spent in the battle, and she cast the child under one of the shrubs. And she went and sat her down over against him a good way off, as it were a bowshot. For she said, Let me not see the death of the child. And she sat over against him, and gave up her a voice, and wept. And Elohim heard the voice of the lad, and the angel of Elohim called to Hagar out of heaven, and said unto her, What aileth thee, Hagar? Fear not, for Elohim hath heard the voice of the lad where he is. Arise, leave up the lad, and hold him in thine hand, for I will make him a great nation. And Elohim opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water, and she went and filled the bottle with water, and gave the lad a drink. Verse 20. And Elohim was with the lad, and he grew, and dwelt in the wilderness, and became, became an archer. And he dwelt in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother took him a wife out of the land of Egypt. And it came to pass at that time that Abimelech and Pichol, the chief captain of his, of his host, spake unto Abraham, saying, Elohim is with thee in all that thou doest. Now therefore answer unto me before by Elohim that thou wilt not deal falsely with me, nor with my son, nor with my son's son, but according to the kindness that I have done unto thee, thou shalt do unto me and to the land wherein thou hast sojourned. 
And Abraham said, I will swear. Verse 25. And Abraham reproved Abimelech because of a well of water which Abimelech's servants had violently taken away. And Abimelech said, I wot not who hath done this thing, neither didst thou that tell me, neither yet heard I of it, but today. And Abraham took sheep and oxen and gave them unto Abimelech, and both of them made a covenant. And Abraham set seven old lambs of the flock by themselves. And Abimelech said unto Abraham, What mean these seven new lambs which thou hast set by themselves? And he said, For these seven new lambs shalt thou take of my hand, that they may be a witness unto me, that I have dig this well. Wherefore he called that place Beersheba, because there they swear both of them. Thus they made the covenant of Beersheba then, Abimelech rose up and Pichol, the chief captain of his host, and they returned into the land of the Philistines. And Abraham planted the grove in Beersheba and called her on the name of Yahuwah, the everlasting Elohim. And Abraham sojourned in the Philistines' land many days. Praise Yahuwah upon the reading of his holy word. Amen. All right. Amen. Thank you, Brother Gary. And let's go to Yahuwah in prayer. Our Father, Yahuwah, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Our Elohim, Elohim of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaqub, our Elohim, our Elohim who is faithful, Elohim who provides for all our needs. Thank you so much, Father, for this day. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness and your goodness and all the blessings that you bestow upon us, even the trials that you give our way. And thank you, Father, for the whole week. Thank you for sustaining us. Thank you for our strength today. And thank you for this time where we can get again our daily bread. Our Father, Yahuwah, I pray that you will give us understanding in all these stories, in all these testimonies that we will be reading in the book of Genesis. I pray, dear Father, that you give us enlightenment and uh, even the application, Father, of knowing all of these stories. May we understand your will in our lives. May we understand, Father, your whole plan as you have planned it out from the beginning. Our Father, we thank you for the life of Abraham. I pray, dear Father, that uh, everything we have read, we can tackle uh, this morning and give us understanding of where we are and what we should do and uh, know more about these people who have been uh, examples of our prophets, examples of Yahusha himself, and examples of even Paul and Peter. I pray, dear Father, that you continue to work in our lives, and uh, as we understand who they are, may we understand what faith is, may we understand what obedience is, may we understand how we should live our lives uh, in this earth as we continue to search for the truth and as we continue to learn father your word which has been hidden in our hearts which has been uh which we have most of us have not read and i just pray dear father that as we go through your word give us understanding i pray father for my opinions that uh please align it with your word i pray that everything that will be preached today will give you glory and honor and will magnify your word and will magnify your law and I just pray, dear Father, that we will get these stories right so that we can learn from them and that we can live like how Abraham lived and how he had his faith manifest in his life. Our Father, thank you for this morning. Please bless my brethren. Please continue to work in the lives of each and every one and uh, guide us into all truth. Let the Holy Spirit do that, Father. And uh, we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. Thank you, Father, for everything and all of these things. We ask and pray in Yahusha's name. Amen and amen. All right. So if you have noticed, Brother Gary skipped uh, chapter 18, <laughs> verse 16 onwards and chapter 19. Brother Gary will take, up, uh, will take care of that when he talks about uh, Lot. And uh, Brother Danny will talk about Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, I know Brother Danny's not here, but I think I will advance his schedule to Wednesday so that uh, we'll put Lot and Sodom and Gomorrah together. 
All right. So Monday and Wednesday will be probably, brethren, will be uh, a Tagalog service. Uh, we are giving Brother Danny um, a slot because we need to train men. We need to train these people. And it's going to be a very interesting story because we'll be getting the story from Genesis and then some of the accounts which are not in Genesis will be getting from the book of Jasher. Very interesting story about Sodom and Gomorrah. And Brother Gary will tackle more about who Lot is, uh, what is his role in scripture, what, uh, who he is, and um, uh, yeah, that's Brother Gary's. <laughs> uh, so hope to see you on Monday for that. But today we'll be focusing more on Brother Abraham, our father Abraham. Okay, so that's our schedule. Tomorrow is our Saturday Sabbath service. So I hope and pray that all of you will be there. And if you have work, I understand. But if it's like a freelance job, uh, please put uh, Yahuwah first in your life and observe the Sabbath day. Monday, Wednesday, Lot and Sodom and Gomorrah, and then Friday, we'll continue on with the study. For today, I'll be focusing on Abraham. That's why we'll start in chapter 18. But before that, okay, uh, before that, instead of giving you a word for the day or scripture for the day, uh, scripture reference for the day, I would like to give you an insight. Okay, this is not a very long insight about the book of Yasher as promised. I will give you an insight about the book of Yasher. Okay, Jasher, Book of the Upright, or otherwise called Book of the Corrected Record. Jasher is not the name. It's rather called the Upright One. Okay, so Jasher means the Upright One. Mm -hmm. That's why it's, it's also called the Book of the Correct Record. And a lot of uh, 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 Yahudims today consider it as a historical book. Mm -hmm. All right, I won't go into uh, detail of the history of it, but I would like to use scriptural reference where scripture, I would say, quoted from it. So there are two types of thinking where the book of, or thinking about the book of Yasher is either, if it's not true, then there, was, there should be, there's someone who has engineered this book to go well with actually not only Genesis, but to the whole account or so many reference in scripture that uh, it's either they quoted from Jasher, or Jasher was uh, reverse engineered. Kung ang ibig sabi ng reverse engineered, kumbaga alam niya yung buong libro so that he could make up stories to go with the Bible or to go with the scriptures. But I strongly believe it's the other way around. And uh, a lot of people say it's a Jewish legend or a uh, uh, legend of the Israelite people, but I want you to understand <laughs> that reading scripture, uh, the 66 books, is also a Jewish legend. It's really up to your faith to believe in it or not. All right? You get that point. Kasi kung Genesis to Revelation lang ang pag-uusapan natin, a lot of people can claim that it is a Jewish legend or uh, a legend of the Israelites. And it's the same is true with the book of Jasher and, and any other book that you can see out there. Now, we just have to really prove all things. So I have a few scriptures that I need you to open before we read the book of Jasher. Go to Ezekiel chapter 29. Ezekiel chapter 29. So please open your scriptures. I know I've been posting the verses uh, in the screen, but... Uh, for exercise purposes, <laughs> let's uh, learn how to open scripture. And we'll read, we'll read a lot of scripture. The only verses that we'll be posting online would be the book of uh, Jubilees and the book of Jasher. So in Ezekiel chapter 29, if you go to verse, I'll start with verse 2. He, said, he, said, he talks to Ezekiel and says, Son of man, set thy face against Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and prophesy against him and against all Egypt. Speak and say, Thus saith Yahuwah Elohim, Behold, I am against thee, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, the great dragon that lieth in the midst of his rivers, which hath said, all right, which has said, 
He said, my river is mine own and I have made it for myself. Now, obviously, Yahuwah is speaking to, uh, to Ezekiel here. But this reference that where that was said is in Jasher chapter 79, verse 51 to 52. And I'll read it to you. And this was at the time of Moses. And the anger of the king was kindled at their words. And he said to them, but who amongst all the gods of nations can do this? My river is mine own, and I have made it for myself. So is there a scripture reference referring to what happened in Egypt, all right, from the time of Moses? And he drove them from him, Moses and Aaron, and he ordered the labor upon Israel to be more severe than it was yesterday and before. So you can see here that Yahuwah himself in the book of Ezekiel is quoting from somewhere where it was said. All right, so sabi ko sa inyo, if this was reverse engineered, then therefore, even the book of Ezekiel dapat pinag-aralan niya. And even the smallest details here in verse 3 of Ezekiel chapter 29, alam niyo, it, it would be hard to reverse engineer this. Psalm 81.5, now this is good. Psalm 81.5, open your scriptures to Psalm 81.5. All right, Eight, Psalm 81.5. Pakibuksan po. I reverse engineer. Reverse engineer means gawa-gawa lang. Kumbaga, he mastered the scriptures. Kung sino man yung nagsulot ng book of Yasher, Yasher, he mastered the scriptures and then he wrote it backwards. Kasi it's either, it was from the beginning because it's writ, it's, uh, it has accounts of Adam until Moses or is it until Moses until nalilito na ako dun sa Jubilees tsaka sa ano eh sa Joshua but it was it should have been written from the beginning otherwise somebody wrote it later and inulit niya yung account okay so it's just two ways of seeing when it was written now in Psalm 81 uh, verse 5 I'll start with verse 4. For this was a statute for Israel and a law of the God of Jacob. So it's backtracking. And then uh, it's backtracking history. Verse 5, he talks about Yosef. This he ordained in Yosef for a testimony. When he went out through the land of Egypt, and then he quotes like he's saying, ito yung sinabi ni Joseph, where I heard a language that I understood not. Now, where in the scriptures, in your 66 books, can you find that account na merong hindi naintindihan si Joseph? Now, in Joshua chapter 49, verse 13 to 14, it says here, And on that night, Yahuwah sent one of his ministering angels, and he came into the land of Egypt unto Joseph. And the angel of Yahuwah stood over Joseph, and behold, Joseph was lying in the bed at night in his master's house in the dungeon, for his master had put him back into the dungeon on account of his wife. So you know the story. And the angel roused him from his sleep, and Yosef rose up and stood upon his legs. And behold, the angel of Yahuwah was standing opposite to him. And the angel of Yahuwah spoke with, the, with Yosef, and he taught him all the languages of man in that night, and he called his name Jehoseph. All right? Kung titignan nyo, actually, that's Yahoshef. So he, again, added his name to his name. All right? And you can see here in Psalm 81, verse 5, he said, Where I heard a language that I understood not because the angel was teaching him all the languages of man that night. And I, if you read on, his purpose being in the dungeon is actually learning. Okay? My purpose po lahat ng nangyayari. Okay? So, you can see, uh, that's a very small detail here in Psalm 81, but gives you a bigger picture. Ano ba tong sinasabi niya in verse 5 that I heard a language that I understood na? You get it? Alright? Now, this is very clear. I know Brother Gary has taught this, pero hindi pa namin binubuksa inyo yung Book of Yasher. But if you search it in the internet, even Britannica would say that Janus and Jambres were magicians. Okay? 
So, mas maniniwala kayo sa Britannica? <laughs> In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 8, here's the question. Where did Paul get the names? It must be from some scriptural reference. It says here in 2 Timothy 3 verse 8, Now as Yanis and Yambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. Now without reading the book of Jasher, hindi natin alam ngayon kung sino to si Yanis and Yambres unless may nagturo sa inyo, unless somebody taught it to you before. The question is, where did they get it? Right? Now here's a reference in Yasher 49.27. It says here, And when they had gone, Pharaoh sent for Balaam the magician and to Janus and Jambres his sons. So, so magician siya na anak ni Balaam and to all the magicians and conjurers and counselors which belonged to the king and they all came and sat before the king. This is the story when uh, Moses and Aaron went before the king and you remember when they threw out the serp uh, their rod and it became serpents they are the ones, they are the magicians. They were the ones trying to replicate what Moses was trying to do, or what, what not trying to do, what Moses was doing, or Yahuwah was doing through Moses, the plagues. These were the names of the magicians. Okay? So the question is if, if uh, Paul was writing to Timothy, where did he get those names? there must have been a book that talked about those names. Because remember, the scriptures that the apostles talked about is the Old Testament. Okay? Not even the epistles yet. Because they were writing the epistles and they always referred to scripture. Okay? So I hope that's clear. Now two references in the book of Joshua chapter 10. Open your scriptures to Joshua chapter 10. Amen. Parang ayaw niyo kami makita. Sinyar ko yung Zoom. Dun. Ay, meron ba? Wala naman. Alright, Joshua chapter 10. Are you all there? Go to verse 13. Am I correct? Joshua chapter 10. And the sun stood still. So they were battling. And jo Joshua, or Joshua, requested uh, for Yahuwah to hold the sun. All right? And in verse 13, I'll uh, start with verse 12. Then spake Yahshua to Yahuwah in the day when the Lord deli uh, when Yahuwah delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel, and he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Ajalon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed, until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Jasher? Yasher. So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven, and hasted not to go down about a whole day. Is it not written in the book of Jasher? Yasher, it is. Yasher 88, 63 to 64. And when they were smiting, the day was declining toward evening. And Joshua said in the sight of all the people, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon and thou moon in the valley of Ayalon until the nation shall have revenged itself upon its enemies. And Yahuwah hearkened to the voice of Yehoshua. And the sun stood still in the midst of the heavens and it stood still six and thirty moments. And the moon also stood still and hastened not to go down a whole day. And there was no day like that before it or after it. So hindi na na po makikita. When you get there, just uh, ask for the tape and just have it reviewed. There, it's written there that Yahuwah hearkened to the voice of a man for Yahuwah fought for Israel. So Joshua has said, has referred to it. Okay. Last verse. 2 Samuel chapter 1. 2 Samuel chapter 1. Verse 18. Now this is talking about the death of Saul. Alright? If you start with verse 17, it says here, And David lamented with this lamentation over Saul and over Jonathan, his how? His son. His son. Verse 18. You can see this. this it's in parenthesis. Alright? It says here, 
also he bade them to cheat to teach the children of Yehuda the use of the bow. Behold, it is written in the book of Yasher. Okay, why? Because in the book of Yasher, chapter 56, verse 8 to 9, it's actually a reference of Jacob teaching the tribe of Yehuda to learn how to use the bow for war. In Yasher 56, verse 8 to 9, it says here, And Yaakov said unto Yehuda, I know, my son, that thou art a mighty man for thy brethren. Reign over them, and thy sons shall reign over their sons forever. Verse 9, Only teach thy sons the bow and all the weapons of war, in order that they may fight the battles of their brother who will rule over his enemies. And Yaakov again commanded his sons on that day, saying, Behold, I shall be this day gathered unto my people. Carry me up from Egypt and bury me in the cave of Machpela, Machpela as I have commanded you. So you can see here that Yaakov said, Turuan nyo yung mga anak ninyo na gumamit ng pana. Alright? So it's actually a reference. If you study Second Samuel Verse one, uh, chapter one, verse eighteen. It's a reference when Jacob has asked his son Yehuda to teach their children the bow, and he was telling, "Bakit nam kamatay matay? Kasi tinamaan po si Saul ng bow and uh, ng arrow pala, <laughs> hindi ng bow. <laughs> tinamaan siya ng arrow na galing sa bow. All right. So basically, natalo sila in a sense na yung kalaban nila was using a bow. So, he was referring to scripture again, especially to the tribe of Yehuda, and telling them, let's teach our brethren the use of the bow, just like our forefathers. Alright? I hope that makes it clear, and I hope that we can use the book of Yasher. Now, if you're not convinced, that's fine. It's okay. You stick with the book of Genesis, but we'll still be using it as a historical reference. Okay? Most of the doctrinal uh, things that we'll be studying will be coming from, of course, our 66 books in our Genesis, but we'll be using a, a script as historical reference, meaning it also will give us pictures kung kaninong anak to, kung kaninong kapatid to, because in the book of Genesis, some of these are not mentioned. And some of them are also mentioned in uh, Jubilees. So just correct me kung minsan nagkakabalibalik na yung mga Genesis, Jubilees, and Yasher. Okay? Now, let's go back to Abraham 10 Tests of Faith. Let's do a recap of the things that we've been studying. So, Abraham Tests of Faith. Last Wednesday, we talked about Sarah. And I hope and pray that you learned something uh, from being a good wife, from being a good a holy woman, and a good mother, and more importantly, a, a godly woman. All right? So... We'll be going back to Abraham and uh, balikan po natin yung mga napag-aralan. So let's go back to uh, Genesis chapter 12. Just a recap and then I want to focus on one thing here in Genesis chapter 12. It says here in chapter 12 verse 1, Now Yahuwah had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house and to a land that I will shew thee. All right. So remember, test number one, Yahuwah asked Abraham to leave his country. And you can see here, we've broken down Genesis chapter 12, the command, the obedience, the promise, and the altar. So what character traits do we learn from it? The character trait is obedience without asking and without murmuring. But there's one thing I want you to learn from this one as well, which... Uh, we discussed, I discussed with Brother Gary just after our uh, scripture study when I was tackling this. And one thing I want you to understand and have an open mind on this because this is very important. And you might be, I don't want you to get this wrong. I want you to truly understand what my point is. Kasi pag mali ang pagkakaintindi nyo dito, ay magiging rebelde po kayo. Alright? I want you to get this right. Now, one thing Yahuwah asked was to, to go, to go out of his land. Why? 
His land was idolatrous. His father was full of idolatry. Remember, Terah? Okay, there's a, another story in that in Jasher, but I won't be tackling about that. But if you read it, the book of Jubilees, that his, his father was an idolatrous person. And remember, he burned all and he went away and his brother Terah died. So he left the land of idolatry. Okay. One thing I want you to learn in what also happened to me. Okay. And probably most of you are, it's still happening to you. And Yahuwah is asking you to do it. But one thing I want you to understand. And if you have questions, please feel free to ask. Okay. That's why I do not want to use the word church anymore. For us to move forward in our spiritual life, we need to get out from the system of the world. Okay? We need to get out of the system, get out from the system of the world. And that includes a lot of things. Okay? Before I go to the second part, I know you're reading it already, but before I go to the second part, I want you to understand there are a lot of uh, worldly system in our life, just like our dietary system. Okay, our dietary system has been eating pork, has been eating shrimps, and I've been watching much Master Chef the other day, and uh, I've been seeing a lot of uh, shrimps being cooked and clams, and uh, you know the world. This is the world system. You can eat everything you want. You can um, basically experiment, and you go to Facebook, you can see a lot of people in Thailand eating uh, insects and eating bats and eating scorpions. And there is a dietary system of the scriptures and a worldly system. The world tells you you can eat anything you want. Yahuwah tells you these are the healthy foods. All right. These are the clean and unclean. Now, there's a lot of other worldly systems that we, can, we need to get out of our life. Okay. Even our character. That's why we need to study these character traits that Abraham has so that whenever we get into a situation, we know how to respond. We know how to apply temperance in our life. And let's go to the second part. Did you know that the word church is part of the world system? Brother MB, yung church nasa King James Bible. I do understand that. And even the word Jesus is in your King James Bible, the name Jesus. But I won't be talking about that. I want to, uh, to just focus in church. This is a simplified explanation. Brother MB, and I've told this to a lot of my brethren who are close to me, and I'll tell it to everyone, okay? I have removed from being a church already, okay? I want to clear that out. Hindi na po tayo church, okay? And I don't want to use the word church, although sometimes it comes out from our mouth because it's part of the system. But I want you to understand that church also is the name of a pagan god. Okay, and the word church is not in the scriptures, brother MB. It is Matthew chapter 16, 18, uh, 16, verse 18. And upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It's a leaven in your King James. Even uh, even uh, William Tyndale, who translated 80% of your King James, did say, Upon this rock I will build my Congregation. All right? So, no, in English, the word, Greek word that is ecclesia, he used the word congregation. All right? Now, who put in there the church? It is the church. <laughs> you know who the church is? Okay. Again, I will repeat for us to move forward in our spiritual life, we need to get out from the system of the world and reading the scriptures will give us more understanding of these things. Alam niyo ang problema? Those people who believe that the King James is the infallible word of God and who believe that it's inerrant, walang mali. Kaya nga, na-stuck na tayo doon sa church na term. But I'm telling you this in a simplified form. I want you to research it for yourself. The word church should not be in your scriptures. Why? Because in Greek, the word church is kiriakon. Alright? Kung tama, hindi naman po ako Greek, pero hanapin nyo na lang po. It's kiriakon, not ecclesia. The original word that church replaced is either kahal in Hebrew 
or ecclesia in Greek, which means assembly, congregation, a group of called out believers. What's the difference, brother MB? The church is the house of the Lord. Yan yung sinasabi natin, di ba? The church is the house of the Lord. But it came from pagan practices. It came from pagan people who translated also the Bible, the scriptures. It's actually, kapag sila ang gumamit ng word na church, if they were the ones who used the words kiryakon or church, it's actually the house of our gods. All right? The house of their gods. So it's basically a house full of gods. Naging ano lang eh, naging term lang para so that it will uh, accustom to our beliefs, accustom to what we know, it became the house of the Lord. But in reality, these pagans called their keriakons or their, their places of their gods, keriakons or church, the house of their gods. And do you know where the word church came from? If you read your scriptures, that's why I'm trying to, I know a lot of times I fail to do it, but when you read CH in the scripture, it should be K, right? So, Ur of Chaldees. Like when I see the letter J, it should be Ya, all right? Yeah, Yoshua, uh, Yashir, it should be Y or I, because there's no letter J. The letter J was only introduced in the 1500s. So I hope that makes it clear. Also, the CH is ka. So it's basically kirk, right? Naging ano na lang kasi kirk, 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 naging church, di ba? But all the CH in the scripture is actually k, all right? So when you, the, Greek, uh, the Hebrew letter chet is actually ke, all right? Ke, ke. It's like Arabic, yeah? Ahmed. <laughs> because we're, that, that's similar to the language. Okay. Now, this is a simplified version of the explanation. But when I say etymology, this is where the word came from. Okay. Kirk, church, cirque. It's other word for circus. And the word kirke, who is the goddess of magic. Now, what happens in a circus? Magic, right? That's why it's called a circus. And a lot of churches right now, a lot of kirkes right now are like in a circus. We are being entertained, but we are not being fed by the word of God. Do you get the point? Amen. Entertainment. Why? One verse. A whole preaching about man's words. But where's Yahuwah's words? Not nowhere. 2%. 3%. That's why you notice when we started moving away from the church structure, we've been reading a lot of scripture. And if you can't handle that, then that means we are still carnal. If we can if we can handle a lot of scripture reading, then we are still uh, carnal, and we are still in, when you say cirque, that's where the word circus came from. We want more entertainment. Now, this goddess of magic, you know, this the story of this goddess of magic, what she does, you see, she has a bowl. She has a vial. All right? You get that? And think about this. In the book of Revelation, Babylon has a cup that makes people drink of that cup so that they can be, ano sabi don? Be drunk with the sorceries. All right? That's what's happening. And you know what? A lot of people are drunk with the wine of the church system. Okay? Don't just take my word from it. Do your research. Just type church, kirke, goddess of magic, it will point you to the right words, to the right etymology. If you want, I have an article that, that, uh, <laughs> but I, I, I encourage you to read this because the church is a circus of entertainment. And 
This may offend you. But you have to search it out because church is not in the scriptures. Yes, yes, it is in your King James, but it is not in the scriptures because church is a made up word so that you can drink of that cup and be drunk with that wine. And Revelation talks about it. Go to Revelation chapter 18. That's why you need to get out of that world system. It's okay. Are you following? Revelation chapter 18. All right. I'll just, I'll, I'll just read verse 2 and 3. And he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils. Where did the church come from? And the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For, listen very carefully, all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Remember, why did Yahuwah, let me just connect this to uh, Genesis. Why did Yahuwah want Abraham out of where he came from? Because that was full of fornication. That was full of idolatry, spiritual adultery. Do you get the point? He wanted him to step out of that place. And he said here, all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And we've been taking part of this. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And uh, the merchants of the earth are wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Listen very carefully. Verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. If you are Yahuwah's people, it's time to get out of of this church i'm not saying about this ecclesia <laughs> come out of the church system all right and he says and be and that ye be not partakers of her sins christmas is one of her sins sunday is one of her sins easter sunday is one of her sins Brethren, listen, it says here, and that you receive not of her plagues. Verse 5, for her sins have reached unto heaven, and Elohim hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works. In the cup which she had filled, fill to her double. Nakikita niyo yung goddess na yan? That is the goddess, Kirke. Just, just pronounce church with the, the word K. Kirk. It's the same word, brethren. Okay? And we've been drinking from her cup. Now, who is that Kirk? It's Babylon. Who's the Kirk now? It's the Roman state church, which was established around 300 A.D., or even a little bit before that, which I want you to understand, have implemented Resurrection Sunday, who has implemented Christmas, and who has implemented the Sunday to be the worship day. Are you following? I'm not yet finished with verse 18. Uh, chapter 18 goes to verse 23. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard and no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great of the earth. Listen. For thy sorceries were all, for by thy sorceries all nations deceived. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. Listen. You know the word sorcery is here? The original word is pharmakia. Same word used as pharmacy. Why? What do you get from the pharmacy? Drugs, right? 
drugs. And it's clear here that a lot of people have been drugged. That's, how, that's why a lot of times you cannot buy these medicines without prescription because these medicines, if you don't have that uh, a sickness, will drug you. All right? Kaya nga din may tinatawag na illegal drugs. And there are legal drugs which, is in, which are in the pharmacy because these you know, it can control the mind. A lot of people, when they drink uh, cough syrup, get drugged, fall asleep. Now, I want you to understand that the sorceries means it's a pharmacy full of drugs that cater to the mind, that cater to your senses, and that, alam nyo, pag drug kayo, kaya nga in drug addict, di ba? The drug addicts have no control whatsoever. And it's like it's also like uh, when Ephesians chapter five talk about the wine, be not drunk with wine. It's similar, but drugs is, has a more longer lasting effect. I want you to understand this. There are a lot of people who have been in church, but have not truly read the word of God, have not truly read the scriptures. What do they follow? The church doctrines but whenever you speak about the doctrines of scripture they don't want to believe you because they're under the drug all right which is rooted from simula pa lang yan na yung that is the objective of satan and that has been babylon since the beginning of time to be confused kaya nga a lot of people all right and a lot of a lot of people who are following me and who are still there who are still confused because you have been drugged by the doctrines of men. And that's why we're going back to Genesis just so that we can get the right doctrines in line. Paano natin magiging, paano natin magagawa? How can we, sa Tagalog muna, paano natin matutuwid ang daan? Alright? How can we straighten the path? if we don't start from the beginning. And I'm just showing you this from Revelation because a lot of people have been drugged. Do you get the point? And I'm going back to test one. Uh, to test one. Character trait. Obedience without asking. How can you obey if you're not reading scripture? Right? And a lot of people are now murmuring, bakit, bakit bawal na kumain ang baboy? Bakit ganito, ganyan? There are a lot of questions right now. What we just really have to obey. Remember to keep the Sabbath holy. Sabbath day holy. Right? And as I said, for us to move forward in our spiritual life, if you really are seeking who the creator is, is start reading scripture. And start mastering scripture. Alright? And we have to get out from the system of the world. Don't say na kay, kay Noah lang yan, kay Moses lang yan, kay Abraham lang yan. Why don't we start following the scriptures first and then as we read on and as we go to the book of Revelation, then we get a better understanding of what God wants and what He hates. Alright? I posted this morning about the commandments and even unto Yahusha's time, Yahusha was saying, if you love me, keep my commandments. Solomon was saying, keep the commandments and live. What Moses said, why don't you obey? You keep the commandments. Joshua said, keep the commandments. We, this, uh, all throughout scripture, keeping the commandments. And then when Paul said it, about abolishing the commandments, then you believe what Paul said. Do you get the point? But instead of getting the context of what Paul was saying, why? You don't want to follow what Moses to Yahushua said to, in keeping the commandments. Diba? Gumagawa tayo ng bagong doktrina natin. We make our own doctrines. That's why I'm telling you, it's time to get out of the church. It's time, I'm not saying <laughs> na magsialisa na kayo. We're no, I am no longer, I do not claim to be a part of the church. You, you, as you have seen, we have changed our logo. That's why we use the word ecclesia. When I was working with Brother Andre, on this, I wanted it to be kahal so that it could it should be Hebrew. 
but since it's more you know uh it's better known <laughs> although it's not a really used word i don't have nothing against with the word ecclesia because it means assembly all right it's an assembly and we will assemble we are an assembly we are a congregation of believers so i hope you get the point and if you have questions please feel free to ask about church okay you get out from the world so where do i go in you get out of the world and get into the word okay you get into the surface how do i get to these know these things how do i get to know the church how do i get to know about the sabbath you dig deeper you dig deeper in the word you know a lot of people will justify my easter naman brother and this survival you dig deeper it's actually passover it's actually pesak all right you just go deeper so i hope and pray that when we read scriptures pag hindi niyo maintindihan there's what you call a strong concordance that gives you an understanding okay yung unicorn nga i've read just a while ago it's actually a rhinoceros <laughs> pero alam mo yan yung unicorn nga pinaniniwalaan ninyo eh saan ka na makakita ng unicorn ngayon wala na where can you see it with care bears with the <laughs> <laughs> with the uh, mythical uh, you know with the cartoons but but there is no really i haven't seen a unicorn but you know uh, an animal with a, a horn like that that's called a rhinoceros so just get into the word and when you don't understand things just use a dictionary <laughs> or use uh the strong concordance i would recommend okay uh i hope I made that clear. Uh, I hope I can get that out of my mouth. The word church, I, I, you know, there are things that I'm getting out of my mouth. I tried to get out of my mouth the word Bible. I tried to get, to get out of my mouth the word God. Because a lot of these came from pagan. And I hope and pray that we just all learn how to speak with Yahuwah the correct way. I praise and thank Yahuwah. He has changed our prayers and expect Okay, I'll just carry on with my. <laughs> Medyo lumalayo na ako. But I want this is one thing I want you to understand. Let's not get into the church anymore. <laughs> this is one thing I really really want you to understand. Okay? So don't forget her, huh? <laughs> She is the church. <laughs> She is the history of the <laughs> the church. Okay. I'll go, just quickly go through this. Test 2, where did we stop? Test 4. He encounters famine, Genesis chapter 12, Jubilees 13. Abraham needed to leave the land and go to Egypt. Character trait, temperance. A very important character trait, temperance, which means self-control. Okay? Kapag huwag tayong nagagalit agad. And I know that, uh, sabihin nyo, o ikaw nga, Brother MB, I know that I am also a work in progress, but you know what? I'm learning a lot from these. Temperance. And most of his trials are temperance. Because test number three, that's a real test of temperance. Kunin yung asawa mo ng hari, all right? Pag kinuha si Alma ni Sheikh, ano? Ibibigay ko, tapos kunin natin lahat ng kayamanan. Hindi, joke lang po. Hindi, pero... One thing I want you <laughs> sorry temperance trust in Yahuwah and of course prayerfulness okay that's one thing you want you want to uh, apply in your lives because with temperance comes prayerfulness because when things get out of hand it's either you get out of hand also or you pray right nakakainis naman to or you pray you get that that reaction di ba i remember wag na hindi ko lang ikwento wag na si manong delivery boy i i'll tell the story uh one one of the three girls here <laughs> there was a delivery okay there was a delivery of uh you know uh it was an insurance card it was delivered before but there was a second set it's the same card so when the delivery boy called 
she answered and said, why do you have another delivery? Why do you have another uh, insurance card? I already have it. Sabi ko, ba't ka nagagalit dun sa delivery boy? Wala naman pong kasalanan yung delivery boy. <laughs> Pero nagagalit pa din siya. <laughs> Now, it's a test of temperance because to think of it, the delivery boy had nothing to do with his delivery. He was just doing his job. And sometimes we get mad at them, but I hope and pray that a lot of times we understand what they go through. They are in their motorbikes at the heat of the sun at 40 to 50 degrees, and they're just delivering all these uh, items. That's not for them. So I hope and pray that even us, when we have these deliveries, we get to learn how to understand the other side, all right? The other, and not only delivery boys, <laughs> even our brethren, even our families, just learn to think before you react, okay? Something that we need to learn, we need to put in our system. And if it's really uncontrollable, start praying, all right? Start praying. That's where it comes in. Uh, uh, in Jubilees chapter 13, I believe, that's where Sarah starts praying. Okay? She starts praying and saying, Ingatan mo po yung asawa ko. Ingatan mo rin po ako dito. And uh, let's, let's look at our prayer. Uh, wala nga pala kayo niya. <laughs> Jubilees chapter 13. Okay. Stop laughing. And to learn. Jubilees chapter 13. Parang na ito All right. Uh, Okay, if you go to Jubilees chapter 13, verse 9. Serga. Sorry, it's in Jasher. Okay. Jasher. Jasher chapter 15. Yasher chapter 15 verse okay verse 17 sorry for that delay it says here in verse 17 and Sarai also prayed at that time and said O Yahuwah Elohim, thou didst tell my Lord Abraham to go from his land and from his father's house to the land of Canaan, and thou didst promise to do well with him if he would perform, perform thy commands. Now behold, we have done that which thou didst command us, and we left our land and our families, and we went to a strange land and to a people whom we have not known before. And we came to this land to avoid the famine. And this evil accident has befallen me. Now therefore, O Yahuwah Elohim, deliver us and save us from the hand of this oppressor and do well with me for the sake of thy mercy. And Yahuwah hearkened to the voice of Sarai and Yahuwah sent an angel to deliver Sarai from the power of Pharaoh. A lot of times, the only way we can get out of a trouble or an instance, or a circumstance, is to pray. All right? Have temperance, trust in Yahuwah, and pray. Okay? And then uh, test for his battle with kings to get Lot back. Remember the story? 
he uh, got luck, got back. So he trusted in his Yahuwah, character trait, and love for brethren. Now let's go to test number five. Now test number five is a test about Abram's wealth. Now the question is, where did Abram get his wealth? Paano po yung maman si Abram? And we've read this uh, across. So if you go to Genesis chapter 12, okay, yung mayaman siya dahil doon kay Sarah. Okay? Actually, uh, they get into this accident. They get into this situation. But because of Sarah, they are also given riches. Okay? If you go to Genesis chapter 12, verse 16, it says here, And he entreated Abram, talking about Pharaoh, Abram well for her sake, for Sarah's sake. And he had sheep and oxen, and he asses, and men servants, and maid servants, and she asses, and camels. And Yahuwah plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because, Sarai, because of Sarai, Abram's wife. So they get Sarai, and because of Sarai, they are given the wealth. Abraham is given the wealth. And then they give back Sarai so that he's got both. All right? And now it says here in chapter 13, verses 1 to 4, four And Abram went up to Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and lot with him into the south. So they're still in Egypt. And Abram was very rich in cattle. So big siyang yumaman because of Sarai. And remember, they stayed for a while in Egypt. It says here, and he silver and in gold, and he went on his journeys from the south, even to Bethel, unto the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Hai, unto the place of the altar, which he had made there at the first. And then you can see here that Abram called on the name of Yahuwah. So what's the test on Abram? Okay, it's about being covetous and it's about be uh, giving what Yahuwah is due. Now remember, the story here, uh, when Lot and... Uh, uh, let me just go to the next text. In chapter 14, you can see, you can read the story of the five kings. Remember, his uh, third test, okay? His test number three, when he fought with the kings. But after that, if you go to chapter 14, verse 18, the scripture clearly tells us that he gave his tithes and his offerings. All right? So first of all, his wealth did not make him covetous. He learned how to be content of what he had, and he obeyed in giving. In verse 18, it says here of chapter 14, Genesis, Melchizedek, king of Salem. All right, what does Salem mean? Peace. And it's actually Yerushalem. Brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High Elohim. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be the Most High Elohim, which hath delivered the, thine enemies into thy hand. And listen, he gave him tithes of all. You can see there, and in verse 21 to 24, he would be offered because he did he he won the victory over Sodom, over the uh, the goods of Sodom. So it says here in verse 21, and the king of Sodom said unto Abram, Give me the person and take the goods to thyself. And Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have lift up mine hand unto Yahuwah, the most high Elohim, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take from a thread even to a shulachet. Sabi na kahit sintas. Nagkiklip nung kanilang mga sapatos. And that I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou shouldest say, I have made, I have made Abram rich. Verse 24, Save only that which the young men have eaten, and the portion of the men which went with me, Aner, Eskol, and Mamre, let them take their portion. And it's the same. Uh, it's actually good in Jubilees chapter 13. If you open your scriptures, uh, let me just show it to you. <laughs> Jubilees chapter 13, uh, verses 25. You read here. 
So here is their victory. And then verse 25, uh, it's, this is very weird because uh, Brother Gary wrote, um, he raised this up to me. May ellipsis eh. And then may ellipsis. Then. <laughs> it says here, for Abram and for his seed, a tenth of the first fruits to Yahuwah. And Yahuwah ordained it as an ordinance forever that they should give it to the priests who serve before him, that they should possess it forever. All right? Again, another word, forever. It's an everlasting, all right, ordinance. And to this law, there is no limit of days. For he hath ordained it for the generations forever that they should give to the Lord, to Yahuwah, the tenth of everything. Can I repeat that? That they should give to Yahuwah the tenth of everything, of the seed and of the wine and of the oil and of the cattle and of the sheep. It's basically everything. And he gave it unto his priest to eat it and to drink it with joy before him. And then it's the same story. The king of Sodom came to him and bowed himself before him and said, Our Lord Abram, give us unto us the souls which thou hast rescued, but let the booty be thine. Okay? Remember, Lord is an uh, attribute. Okay? So in the end, our Yahuwah Abram. No. That's a title. Okay? It's an address, Adonai. And Abram said unto him, I lift up my hands to the Most High God, Elohim, that from a thread to a shoe latchet I shall not take aught that is thine, lest thou shouldest say, I have made Abram rich, save only what the young men have eaten, and a portion of the men who went with me is the same account, Aner, Eskol, and Mamre, these shall take their portion. Kasi kinain na nila So hindi na pwede ibalik. Eaten eh. Alright, so I hope this is clear. This is a Something that we should be aware of. It says here, it's ordained forever. All right? The tenth of everything. And he just gave examples. So I believe it's not just fruits. It's not just food. But it's more of everything. All right? Everything that you possess. And that also includes your time. All right? Uh, can I reiterate that? That includes your time. Okay, so I hope and pray that's clear. Are you still following? Any questions? Okay, so what do we learn? We learn contentment. We learn not, we should not be covetous. I remember, okay, and I have a couple of uh, verses that would support this obedience in giving all, okay, all that is required of you and the tithe is required. It's a requirement. Okay, Deuteronomy chapter 8. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 8. Because most of us, this is when we forget. If you go to Deuteronomy chapter 8, actually these are one of my favorite chapters in Deuteronomy. Chapter 6 is one, chapter 8 is one. And it says here, I'll start with verse 6. It says here, Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of Yahuwah thy God to walk in his ways, and to fear him. As I said, even in Moses, he said, keep the commandments. Yahusha said, keep my commandments if you love me. I'll jump to verse 10. When thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless Yahuwah thy God for the good land which he hath given thee. Verse 11. Beware that thou forget not Yahuwah thy Elohim in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes which I command thee this day lest when thou hast eaten and art full and hast built goodly houses and dwelt therein, and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied and all that thou hast is multiplied, verse 14, then thine heart be lifted up and thou forget Yahuwah, thy Elohim, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. I'll jump to verse 17 just to save time. And thou say in thine heart, my power and my might and of mine hath gotten me, mine hand hath gotten me this wealth. Wealth. You know, a lot of people say, ang galing-galing ko kasi. Ang galing ko kasi engineering. 
ang galing ko kasi nga uh, uh, technician eh. Ang galing ko talaga. That's when we forget. And he says in verse 18, but thou shalt remember. You know the word remember? When it says remember, you ought to remember. Remember to keep the Sabbath day holy? Remember. He says here, remember that Yahuwah thy Elohim, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which is where unto thy fathers, as it is this day. Whenever we start forgetting, you start remembering. Okay? When we forget to read our scriptures, start remembering. Because you will, alam niyo, he, he, it will drag you out. And that's how the Israelites became wicked. That's how the, the history became wicked. And how? Are you just going to rely on man-made doctrine? Someone asked me, what is man-made doctrine? Any doctrine that does not go with the scriptures. Okay? Let's go to Luke chapter 12. Moses said it. Luke chapter 12, Yahusha quoted something. Here, in verse 13. Luke chapter 12. I'll start with verse 13 because somebody asked him. And one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. <laughs> Nabasa agad ni Yahushua yung nasa isip niya. And this is happening these days. Mama Alma, pakihati nga to para sa amin para fair ang hatian. Right? We do this. We do. I remember doing this. Ikaw na maghati para fair yung hatian. Now, Yahushua said, what was his answer? And he said unto him, man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? I mean, cutting a portion of cake should be easy enough. Half, half, right? But because of covetousness, some of us want a bigger half, right, Sister Rose? You know, a lot of people would ask a judge to divide something which you yourselves can divide if you are honest enough between yourselves to know what is the perfect half or what is the right division. Do you get my point? Pero dito, na, dito nagkakagulo ang mga tao. This is how people, because people are being covetous, whether it be land, whether it be a cake, whether it be food, whether it be money. All right? You know what? In money, there has to be an, a clear accounts. Because money, hindi mo pwedeng dayain yan. That's numbers. And in, in, in money, pag ito yung utang, pag porsyento, may porsyento, then that's what, what it is. It is what it is. But when you say, oh, uh, my father gave me 100, ikaw na maghati. Abay, mahirap mang hatiin yun? <laughs> Di ba? So Yahusha is clearly saying, who made me a judge or a divider over you? Basically, the question is, can you not divide it yourselves? Because you're asking him because you know that he is the righteous judge. Because you yourselves cannot judge what is righteous enough to get, alam mo yan, baka kasi may konting one inch na mapunta sa kanya. Now, listen, in verse 15, what did Yahushua say? And he said unto them, take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. Now you just read on for yourselves. It's basically, this is the man who just wanted to accumulate and accumulate wealth. And it's talking about covetousness. Alam nyo, napakadali lang pong maghati. But the question is, why are we being covetous? I mean, the tithe is the tithe. It's 10%. You should be able to know what a tithe is. But why do we have this uh, commotion within ourselves or this argument within ourselves? Magkano ba ibibigay ko sa Panginoon? A tithe is a tithe. You have to understand what the 10% is. Kahit hindi ka pa magaling sa math, you should know what a 10% is. Okay? So I hope and pray that gives us a picture of how, Yahu, how Abraham did, how did he collect his wealth? through Yahuwah's provision also. It was the trials that came to their way, but it did not make him covetous, and he was obedient in giving. Now, magsisimula pa lang tayo sa text na binasa natin. 
and I hope and pray that you're all with me. I know I've uh, already finished my time, but uh, it's a worship. Uh, it's not a worship. <laughs> it's a Friday. <laughs> Sorry. It's a Friday. So let's go back to Genesis chapter 17 because we'll be reading through some of it. Okay. S number six, circumcision. Test number six is talking about circumcision. And he was given a covenant here. I, I just want to read through verses one, chapter 17 of Genesis 17, chapter 17 of Genesis verse one, sorry. And when Abram was 99 years old, okay? 90 years old and nine. Isipi mo 99? He was going to be circumcised? He could have just said, uh, let's do it to the younger ones. But he just obeyed. It says here, Yahuwah appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty Elohim, El Shaddai. Walk before me and be thou perfect. I sent this verse the other day. What's our objective? Perfection, right? We can say once saved, always saved, and you're not, we're not even striving to be perfect. And Yahuwah Elohim was uh, asking Abram, be thou perfect. And it says here, and I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face and Elohim talked with him saying, as for me, behold, my covenant is with thee and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Remember, he did not have Isaac yet at this time. Verse five, neither shall thy name anymore be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham for a father of many nations have I made thee. I will not call you any more exalted father but I will call you a father of many nations. Verse 6, And I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee, and I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee in their generations, for an everlasting covenant to be an Elohim unto thee, and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger and all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession and I will be their God. Mm. Listen. And Elohim said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant. Therefore, thou and thy seed after thee in their generations, this is my covenant which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee, every man child among you shall be circumcised. Now you can see here that uh, Yahuwah asks him to be circumcised at 99 years old. Verse 11, and you shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you, every man child in your generation, he that is born in the house or bought with money of any stranger which is not of thy seed, he that is born in thy house and he that is bought with thy money must needs be circumcised and my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant and the uncircumcised man child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised that soul shall be cut off from his people. He hath broken my covenant. Okay? Now let's read from the book of Yasher. Yasher chapter 17. Okay? And this is from verses 17 to 20. And it says here, uh, Wait. Yasher 17, 20. Uh, did I click 17? I, Sama, I told you I will be confused. <laughs> Thank you. Jasher 17. Okay. 17. At that time, Yahuwah appeared to him and he said to him, I will make my covenant between me and thee 
and I will greatly multiply thy seed, and this is, my co this is the covenant which I make between me and thee, that every male child be circumcised, thou and thy seed after thee, at eight days old shall it be circumcised, and this covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And now therefore, thy name shall no more be called Abram, but Abraham, and thy wife shall no more be called Sarai, but Sarah, for I will bless you both, and I will multiply your seed after you, that you shall become a great nation, and kings shall come forth from you. Remember, he did not have Isaac yet, but he was asked to be circumcised. Now, if uh, you continue on in Genesis chapter 17, it's going to talk about uh, the promise of Isaac, okay? But also here in chapter 18 of Yasser, it says here, and Abram rose and did all that Elohim had ordered him, and he took the men of his household and those bought with his money, and he circumcised them as Yahuwah had commanded him, and there was not one left whom he did not circumcise. And Abraham and his son Ishmael were circumcised in the flesh of their foreskin. Thirteen years old was Ishmael when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. Okay? So, you can see this comparison in Galatians chapter 3 as well, that Ishmael was born from Hagar, he was not yet circumcised at that time, okay? Now, before Isaac was born, a year after this, okay, you could see that Isaac was born of a circumcised man. You get the point? The uncircumcision and the circumcision, okay? I hope that gives you a clearer picture when you read the New Testament. Now, again, what character trait? Obedience. And also, I want you to understand there was a story of hospitality here. Why? In Genesis chapter 18, verse 1, there were three men who came to him. Side story lang po ito. This is uh, still in his circumcised, uh, kakatuli lang po sa kanya nito. In Genesis chapter 18, I'll just read the first verses. And Yahuwah appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. You know what he was doing? Nagpapagaling po siya. Kakatuli lang nila eh. Now, I remember when I got circumcised, it would take about one week. And pag nangamatis pa yan, it will take longer. Okay? And take note, he's a 99 years old. He's 99 years old and he got circumcised. And then in verse 2, it says here, And he left up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door. He was uh, newly circumcised. It says here, And bowed himself toward the ground and said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee from thy servant. Now you could imagine him from the pain, but when he saw these people or the angels, it says here, he was hospitable enough and he wanted them to get in. He wanted them to eat. He says in verse 4, Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree and I will fetch a morsel of bread and comfort ye your hearts after that you shall pass on for therefore are you come to your servant. And they said, So do as thou hast said. And in verse 6, you could, you could see that they hastened and he asked Ara to cook a fine meal. Okay? and make cakes. And verse 7, Abraham ran into the herd. He, he got the uh, siya ng uh, a tender and good uh, calf, alright? Yung, hindi mo to, uh, batang baka, alright? And it says here, he dressed and set it before them. So it took time, but he did the cooking, alright? He, he was, naging aligaga siya to be, to entertain these, uh, this, guests that he had. Now I want you to understand that he was newly circumcised because in Jasher is the same story but it says here in verse one, uh, verse 4 and Yahuwah appeared to him in the plain of Mamre and sent three of 
uh, and Yahoo appeared to him in the plain of Amre and sent three of his ministering angels to visit him. And he was sitting at the door of the tent and he lifted his eyes and saw and lo, three men were coming from a distance and he rose up and ran to meet them and he bowed down them to them and brought them into his house. So it's the same account. But in verse three, it says, and in the third day, Abraham went out of his tent. So, nagpapainit siya, nagpapatuyo siya ng sugat niya. Okay? But, in his, uh, you know, his hospitable trait, he was like, I have to do this. Kasi kung tayo, alam yan. Uh, now, what, you can, what we can learn here, what can we learn here? I believe that there are times where we are not in the mood or we think, that's why the scripture tells us also, Apostle Paul says, in season and out of season. All right? In everything, we should be doing good. Okay? We should be circumcised. <laughs> we should have, you know, it, 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 doesn't, ma it doesn't mean na wala ka sa mood. It's, it basically boils down to temperance and changing our attitude. All of it. Okay? Kasi maraming isa sa atin, moody ang taong yan. Then we have to change. There are a lot of things that we need to change. And here, even though that Abraham was not in that right position, was, was not feeling good about what happened three days ago, but still, he saw these uh, ministers, okay? He saw these ministers, and sabi niya, ako gagawa nito. And we have to serve them. And I hope and pray that even if we're not in the mood, even if, you know, we are, I know there are a lot of times because we are already in this corruptible state. But I believe what we need to change is the, the inside. Our bodies will be corrupting. A lot of times it will not be feeling good. A lot of times it will be, you know, it will feel pain and sorrow and anguish. But remember, what's inside should be changing. Na kahit, alam mo yun, kahit na pawis na pawis ka na, there are a lot of things that need to be changed. Alam mo yun, hindi ko alam kung paano ko i-explain it. There are a lot of things that we need to change in our inside. And we have to let the Spirit work. And we have to let the Spirit work in our minds that whenever we want to violently react on things, it has to be internalized first. And we have to start doing what Abraham did. Okay? Tama ba? Naintindihan niyo pa ba ako? Amen? So I just wanted to add that story of hospitality because I believe it can teach us a lot of things. Abraham was not in a position para magkikilos. And for all the men, you know, you know that feeling of being circumcised. Okay? And you know that it will not heal in three days. Kaya nga siya nag paaraw dun sa heat of the sun, heat of the day, so that it will heal quicker. But there was an opportunity to serve. I hope and pray that whenever there is an op opportunity to serve a brother, a brother or a sister, let's not miss that opportunity, but rather be ministers ourselves. We do not know. Maybe they are angels that we are ministering to. Okay? Or Yahuwah is giving us, you know, these are all tests and these are all things that we should be aware of. Okay? Now, uh, last th four tests. I will tackle test number seven, which is similar to Pharaoh, but I will tackle that tomorrow because that is a whole chapter. And as expected, I will not finish all the tests today. So do you have any questions to everything? that we have uh, studied and that we have read. And in advance, you can read Yasher chapter 20. You can find it online. Uh, it's easy to find. Just make sure it's the right Yasher. There are three types of Yasher. <laughs> but uh, I can give you the link if you want. And read Genesis chapter 20. Okay? So any questions? Any clarifications? Brother Gary, would you like to add anything? 
Sabi ko sa inyo, malilito ako dun sa Jubilees, Yasher, and Genesis. So, just correct me if I'm finding something wrong. I've written it down so that uh, you can also help me. All right. So, I hope you learned something. I hope you learned something about Kirke Church, getting out of the system, and just changing. It's, it's truly changing our whole attitude, our whole image. From the image of the world to the image of Christ, to the image of Yahusha. Brother Gary, mayroon ka bang idadagdag? <laughs> Brother Ga! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I want you to turn your scriptures on Romans. Romans chapter 2. Ito lang po yung idadagdag ko. Because we're talking about circumcision. Romans chapter 2. Judge not. Sorry po kung medyo mahaba tayo ngayon. But it is worth it na binibigay natin yung oras natin sa Panginoon. Okay. Romans 2 verse 29. Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2 verse 29. I'll start on 28. But he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of Elohim. So we're talking about circumcision in here. And makita nyo dito sa scriptures na sabi ni Apostle Paul, yung totoong circumcision, yes, we are, we, we, are, we are talking about flesh or physical circumcision. But I want you to understand also that you should be circumcised by heart. Kasi ang totoong pagsunod sa Panginoon is kailangan nililinis natin yung puso natin. Yun lang po. I hope I get the mark. <laughs> I get the mark. <laughs> amen, amen. Alright? I hope that I, I made my point. Ang totoong circumcision, you should be circumcised by flesh, but most importantly, dapat nililinis natin yung puso natin. Kasi yan po yung totoong pagsunod sa ating Panginoon. Kay Yahuwa, kay Yahusha. Amen? Amen po. Circumcised in heart. But uh, just one... Uh, thought medically saying what does circumcision do it's cleansing right it's it's for sanitary purposes so and that's <laughs> this is the issue with the world today that uh, a lot of people don't understand they believe medicine but they don't believe in yahuwah they don't believe in the creator who have ordered this it's like People would believe uh, doctors saying that eating swine or pork is bad for you, but they don't believe it doctrinally because the Creator said it's unclean. <laughs> so it's the same with circumcision. And uh, it's actually 1 Corinthians chapter 7. And uh, I just want to go deeper on this a little bit. Uh, not, I, I just want to... Read it to you, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 19. Circumcision is nothing, and circ uncircumcision is nothing, but the keeping of the commandments of Elohim. But remember, one of the commandments is actually one of the commandments, and as you we have read, it's an everlasting covenant. Okay, So it's basically saying, if you cannot obey something, it will not avail you if you're circumcised or not. That's what he's saying. If you're circumcised or not, the circumcision will not avail you anything if you are not circumcised in heart. Okay? But if it says here, but the keeping of the commandments of Elohim, it will go back to the commandments and it's an everlasting covenant. Okay? So it will go back. And if you uh, go to the story of, I can't remember if it's Timothy or Titus in the book of Acts, that he needed to circumcise one of them. Uh, I think it's, it was Timothy. 
uh, it was Timothy, that they, he needed to circumcise Timothy because he did not want any contention with the Yahudims there. But it's still following the commandment of Yahuwah. Abraham did uh, follow Yahuwah in the commandment. He was 99 years old. So what's keeping us? I mean, if, if we're not uncircumcised and we learn all of these things, what's keeping us from obeying Yahuwah? Okay? It's, I, I believe it's a misquoted verse. Again, if you don't go get the whole context. Because it, it, they will say, ah, wala naman yung circumcision. Now, it says, uh, but the keeping of the commandments. So it still goes back to the commandments. <laughs> and, and, you know, people will use the New Testament to create their new doctrines without going back to the original commandments. So I hope that makes it clear. If you have, have questions, I can elaborate it with you personally. But it's something that, you know, as I said, the New Testament, especially the epistles, our commentaries of the Old Testament. Okay? So, and it's not a contradicting, I mean, huh? hindi, hindi po siya nagkukontrahan, ha? It's no, it's like, not. It's like uh, grace and faith or faith and works. Faith, faith and works, it doesn't work like that, ha? Parallel po sila, ha? Yung circumcision by flesh and circumcision by heart, it should be comes, coming together. Hindi yung, okay, flesh na lang, tapos... Mm, hindi nasusunod or in, by heart na lang. Hindi po ganun. Kailangan nag-work sila together in unity. Same as saving by faith and doing the will of the Father sa ating mga buhay. Ganun po yan. Man. Alright. So if you want to discuss this with me later or in a, ano, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, it's something that uh, we, we just really have to put in as make it straight what Paul said because a lot of people are confused with Paul is saying, and they, a lot of churches have mistranslated or misinterpreted Paul in what he has said. So we just have to make things clear. The commandments are there. The law of the Lord is perfect. It converts the soul. The testimonies of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. Okay, So these are testimonies of Yahuwah that we're talking about. And I hope and pray that he gives us instruction so that we can understand the New Testament better. Okay? It should not contradict. And if there's scripture that's contradicting the Old Testament, then trust the Old Testament. <laughs> because you might be misinterpreting a scripture in the New Testament because the New Testament is already in the Old Testament. Jeremiah chapter 31, I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. And that covenant is I would put their laws in their hearts. Okay? So that's the covenant. That's the New Testament. And the New Testament should not, never contradict the Old Testament. Okay? Never. So it's the, if there's contradiction, you're understanding it wrong. Okay? So tomorrow, we'll continue with test 7, 8, and 9, and 10. Uh, we got a couple of uh, interesting... Uh, uh, stories in the book of Yasher and a lot of uh, traits. It will all go back to temperance, trust in Yahuwah, prayerfulness, and obedience. Obedience. The last test, test 9 and 10, is about obedience. Test number 10 is about temperance. So I hope and pray to see you again tomorrow and I hope you learned something today. I'll leave you with this image. <laughs> and uh, Brother Gary, please close us in a word of prayer. All right. Praise Yahuwah sa lahat po nang natutunan natin ngayong araw. And let's type in manalang and let's pray. Father Yahuwah in heaven, uh, hallowed be thy name. Thank you, Father, sa lahat po nang natutunan namin ngayong umaga. Salamat, Panginoon, sa Salita niyo po na pinapaunawa niyo po sa amin. Salamat sa scriptures na meron kami. Salamat sa eklasya na meron kami, Panginoon, na natututo po kami sa inyong salita. And I pray, Father, sa mga kapatid ko, sa mga sa mga inyong, sa inyong mga anak, Panginoon, na nakikinig, I pray, Father, na uh, kayo po yung magtanim sa aming mga puso, sa aming mga isipan, yung mga natututunan namin. And I pray, Father, na tulungan niyo po kaming alisin yung mga bagay na naitanim sa amin before, uh, Yung, yung, yung sistema ng mundo, Panginoon. I pray, Father, na uh, 
uh, kayo po yung magpakita sa amin na dapat pumalis kami sa lugar na yun. Dapat pumalis kami sa sistema ng mundo at pumasok po kami sa inyong salita, Panginoon. Sundin namin ang nakasulat sa inyong salita. Na pray, Father, na uh, patuloy nyo pong ipaunawa sa amin ang inyong salita at patuloy nyo pong buksan ang puso at isipan ng bawat isa na uh, lahat po ng natututunan namin is ma-apply po namin sa aming buhay, Panginoon. And salamat po, salamat sa sal salamat sa eklesya na ito na nagtuturo po sa amin, Panginoon. And may mga kapatid kami na nasa trabaho ngayon, Panginoon. I pray, Father, yung pag-iingat para sa kanila. And may mga kapatid kami na hindi po namin kasama. Patuloy niyo po silang ingatan, ilayoy niyo po sila sa anumang, sa anumang mga bagay na nakakalat ngayon sa mundo, mga karamdaman, Panginoon. And protektahan niyo po sila, Panginoon. And dalangin ko, Panginoon, yung nalalabing araw na to, I pray, Father, na matakila ka po namin, maibigay po namin sa lahat na ang lahat ng ito sa inyo. And yung mga ginagawa namin is naaayon po sa inyong, sa inyong salita, naaayon po sa inyong kagustuhan. Panginoon, na pray, Father, na napapalulululhati ka po sa lahat ng mga bagay na ginagawa namin. Salamat po. Salamat sa lahat ng ito. Salamat sa lahat ng tinuturo niyo po sa amin. And salamat sa mga kapatid ko na nagpapatuloy po sa inyong gawain. Dalangin ko, Panginoon, uh, pagpalain niyo yung buong maghapon namin. Ingatan niyo po yung bawat isa. Ingatan niyo po yung pamilya namin. And may mga pakapatid kami na may mga karamdaman. I pray, Father, pagalingin niyo po sila. And Ingatan nyo po yung mga leader namin, yung man of God na ginagamit nyo, Panginoon. Ingatan nyo rin po yung, yung, yung kumpanya na pinagtatrabahoan namin. May mga kapatid kami ngayon na may pinagdadaanan, may mga problema sa trabaho. I pray, Father, na patuloy nyo po silang patatagin. Patuloy nyo pong palakasin ang, ang pananampalataya sa inyo, Panginoon, na hindi nyo po kami iiwanan, hindi nyo po kami pababayaan. And sa mga leader namin, sa aming mga kumpanya, Panginoon, I pray, Father, yung, pag, yung tamang desisyon para sa kanila, sa mga pinagdadaanan namin ngayon. Ganyan naman po sa aming bansa, Panginoon, sa Pilipinas. I pray, Father, yung mga leader na ginagamit nyo po na bigyan sila ng tamang desisyon ng mga gagawin nila para maging maayos yung aming bansa, Panginoon. And salamat sa lahat ng ito. Salamat sa pagpapaunawa sa amin na inyong salita. May mga bagay po kami, Panginoon, na hindi pa nagagawa hanggang sa ngayon. May mga bagay kami, na, nagkakamali kami, na hindi po naayon sa inyong salita. Ituro niyo po ito sa amin, Panginoon. Ipakita niyo po ito sa amin nang sa gayon po magawa po namin at maluwalhati namin kayo. Patawad po sa lahat ng ito. Ito po ang aking dalangin sa pangalan ng iyong anak na si Yahusha. Amen. Amen and amen. And thank you brethren for joining us. And I hope and pray that we are learning. Hope and pray that uh, let's just continue reading scripture. For those of you who have not worked, don't have work today, just keep reading, reading. And if you have questions, if you have uh, a lot of uh, words that you don't understand, use uh, I can recommend some apps if you are using an iPhone or even an Android. I can recommend some apps that you can use so that you can uh, just get the right words and uh, understand what you're reading. Okay, so maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. And to Yahuwah all be the glory. Goodbye everyone. And I hope to see you tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the morning. Bye-bye. and. Stop streaming. Stop share. Amen. Goddess of magic. Nakatawa <laughs> 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 <laughs>